So is Alpha Investments giving up on Magic? So in these videos, he looks a little bit more stressed out. He doesn't look as happy. I don't think anyone's happy during a recession. Thank you, Joe Biden. Um, but overall, I've never really seen it. I mean, he looks like he's almost gonna cry. I haven't watched his videos in a long time. Uh, typically, I just read the title and I don't really have time to watch the videos, but I did watch all his recent videos and I am caught up, you know, I watched the recent ones. And it seems like, you know, from heavy bags to now he's making videos about Pokemon and Pokemon going up. Remember, Pokemon was, he's got that famous Pokemon bathroom where he thought Pokemon was just trash. So now he's promoting the one product, but mainly I think the reason he's doing so is he really doesn't like how Wizard of Coast is managed. He, he mentions Mero lied and there's a lot of proof that he lies. And you know, I've never taken Mero more than a clown. He is a clown that they tell him to dance and he dances. They tell him to plank and he'll plank. They tell him to lie to the magic players. He will lie to the magic players. So I you know legally, I think the reserve list is shit. I don't think there was ever a contract, but yes, did this Mero mother effort make all promises under the sun that the reserve list was okay and they would never touch it and it's only getting stronger? Yes, he did for marketing reasons, right? It's hard to sell. You know, what I think happened, let me, let me be honest with you, and this is why Alpha Investment is mad, is a lot of people got inside information. Channel Fireball sold all its reserve lists right before. And it sold itself. Channel Fireball does a ton of legacy. They have a lot of, lot of reserve list cards at the time. They sold themselves to TCG Player, but before, when they were selling, they sold off their inventory. Not just First Edition Monarch, which at the time was hilarious, right? but that was a smoke screen for them dumping their entire reserve list. Card Kingdom, they had huge quantities. They would take, you know, 18, 20 dual lands. And then suddenly, right, right before this thing, not right, like two months before the announcement of the 30th anniversary, they put their limit to four. So the majority, if you didn't watch very closely, you didn't know what was happening because you're like, oh, well, the buy list is still very high. Things are going good. But then you didn't see that their limit, the quantity went from 40 to four. Yeah, that's a problem. Is it beyond what I think? So the type of relationship Rudy has with Flesh and Blood and uh, MetaZoo is they will tell him, hey, we're gonna dump this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. He has a close relationship with them, similar to Channel Fireball of Magic the Gap. Channel Fireball, remember, for a time, they ran all of the Magic Fest events. This isn't some nobody, this is the person who ran all your events. This is, even if like the companies, the people in the company are interchanged. It's kind of like the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, and how they all work for oil and gas companies. You know, the EPA, hey, you know, hey, oil and gas company, I, I noticed that there's a leak in the uh, ocean, but, and then, after they do their service as an EPA member, then they get hired by ExxonMobil for a lot of money. I wonder why. So when you talk about government and private companies or even public companies, there's a lot of intermingling because if, if, if ExxonMobil comes to you and says, hey man, we gotta, we gotta fix you know, this bill, man. We can't do this. Don't, our inspection failed, but we want to pass. We don't want to get fined. Like the fines are half a billion dollars. We don't want to do that. And like, hmm. well, you know, I'm only in office for one more year and my stepson, he really needs a job. Can we make, give him the president? Can we make him president of this company? All right, we'll give him a row. And you know, I'm leaving and you know, so when you see a lot of government, and this is why I do not trust government, right? You see a lot of people who work in the government and then they get really, really amazing jobs that they're completely unqualified for in the private sector. You see this in oil, gas, weapons development, and so on. I mean, it's like, oh, wow, this guy who gave you a contract for a billion, a trillion dollars is suddenly the vice president of the company. <laughs> like the guy, I think, what was his name? He was like Rex something. He was like a, he used to be the president of like ExxonMobil and he was like, the EPA president? I was like, come on. Come on. Come on. This is just foolish, right? 
Come on, like this is too obvious. You gotta, you gotta at least like put like some people in between him. Anyway, so he's kind of on the verge of crying because he had a lot of money, and, and then he was like, "Oh, they will never print Arabian Nights. How are they gonna do it?" Rudy, they just printed the out the Black Lotus. Do you really think your Arabian Nights cards are safe from being reprinted? No, I think he knows it, but he's like, you know, kind of like. What was the word card when you're like a, a child and then you're like you're just screaming and yelling and just pertinent child like the end is here the end is uh it's not near it is here um once they realize how much money they can make from proxy cards then the next question is okay what if we made these tournament legal and they were not proxy cards and the next question is, oh, can we make a remaster set of, uh, you know, Antiquities, Arabian Nights of the Big Free? Oh, why don't we just reprint the booster box? Oh, or I mean, we don't need to reprint it. We can just find some in storage and put it in <laughs> Commander, Command. we can put it in the Dominaria United Collectors booster boxes to help our sales there. My point is, hey, enjoy magic. I'm going to enjoy magic. I'm going to open packs, not because I want to, but I are signed a distributed contract, so I'm already locked in. So I don't have a choice in the matter. I'm just going to continue to open packs, continue to enjoy magic my special way. But as in terms of an investment, as in terms of like, where do you put your money? You know, you can see in his face, you can see in my face. It's over, you know, it's over. Um, it was fun. The MTG Finance was fun, but I truly expect in the next five to 10 years, based on what Hasbro wants to do, stock price is still dropping at this moment in time, by the way. They found a player base. The player base is a bunch of lemmings and they're gonna milk these lemmings for as much as they can get. And once they're done milking, they'll go to the slaughterhouse. Actually, I, lemmings are not like that, it's uh, cows. They found a bunch of cows, overweight cows, and they're gonna milk their udders. And once they run out of milk, they're going to make them beef product. That's you, Magic players. That's you. So anyway, I still have to buy. Uh, I talked to my distributor this morning. I can't get out of the contract for Magic. You uh, say, oh, you can get out of the contract. I'll let you out there. But then you don't get no Pokemon. I was like, oh no, I need, I need Pokemon. <laughs> oh, you gotta take magic. I was like, oh God, no. God, no. <laughs> uh, I almost wanted to cry when the guy was like, okay, you gotta take some magic if you want that Pokemon. You want that Pokemon cheddar? Pokemon is so fun to open at $2.10 a pack. It's, it, even if I don't get any hits, it's like, oh, well, it's $2.10. I didn't really do lose that much. <laughs> My guys. <laughs>